votre au quotidien. C'est sur Taïwan. Zona Fee Hmm, sounds like a jolly little picnic group. That's oh, your cue. We're the That's your cue, Tom. <laughs> and we're live! Yes. <laughs> Welcome to Sonar Feed, episode 245, Group Therapy, session 15. We're here live at the Berliner Pub in beautiful downtown Renton. Ahead of the curve. Wow, That's even right. the peanut gallery is lackluster <laughs> here today. Uh, so we're just going to dive right in. Uh, we are here with special guest... Maybe regular guest at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bored, bored on Mondays. Matt Pence. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. A good, like, soothing therapy voice you had going on there. Yeah, I gotta, you know, we gotta keep it chill tonight. It'll probably get raucous later when we talk about all the goals. That this or when you order me a second drink. <laughs> I'm not doing that ever again. <laughs> I mean, I probably will, but... <laughs> yeah, you will. Yeah, maybe not in the next ten minutes. Uh, so anyway, I'm Tom Biro. This is water. Bougie Hooli. <laughs> to my right again is Matt Pence. Or at Matt Pence. Correct? Athletic, Athletic Seattle. And if you haven't subscribed, I subscribed. Totally worth it. Absolutely. Good call. And to his right, your left. Mickey Turner. You can find me on the Twitters at Turner ESQ. Nice. And to your right. Mickey is... I'm Adam Weigel. Oh, what are you doing? Producing the show. Oh, cool. All right. Just checking. And thanks to the, the peanut gallery that always shows up here in the bar. Mark's actually here tonight, which is kind of weird because he's just hanging out, drinking. Oh, wait. That's kind of the same. <laughs> that's what he so does. doing that right now. Anyway. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, we have silence on the show for 10 minutes when Mark's producing. And he's like, oh, I took my headphones off. Or... I that try. happens to me, actually. That's because you're rocking that cool look you got going on right now. Well, it, there's a, I've said this before, but there's a split second delay between what I'm saying and what I'm hearing. And so it really throws me off. So I wear them like this because that's how all the cool kids do it. I've seen pictures of Sounders doing it, and therefore I know it's cool. <laughs> Just because of that? That's the only reason. Okay. So why don't we just get down into it? It's group therapy, so we might as well just address the problem head on. And the problem is, well, I'm sorry. One of the problems <laughs> we'd like to talk about is... Please clar clarify um, that. <laughs> ...is the uh, lack of offense with the Sounders and yet another no-goal game. Stefan Fry, thought we thought he was going to get a goal in there at the end. Didn't happen. Kind of went the other way. Did not work out for him. Um, yeah, I, you know you're at a point where, like, the previous game, Chad Marshall was playing forward for, like, five minutes, and then the next game, <laughs> Stefan Fry <laughs> is in the area. Three minutes. You're like, huh, okay. This is an interesting, interesting point. So, uh, you know, went into a home-and-home -home with Real Salt Lake, not a great team. They let up what was it, 25 goals or something, or 26 at that point, uh, and haven't let up any more since they played Sounders. So we brought their goals against average down. So that was a plus, I guess. Some, that's, yeah, whatever. Very, Very polite. Yeah. Uh, it's the Seattle way. But, you know, Matt, we were talking off the air right before the show. It was like, oh, that was the same game again. It's on a loop, right? Yeah. And it's like, Again, you got to feel for Schmetzer and the team. Like, you, It's not that they don't want to trot out the same lineup. They literally can't trot out the same lineup from week to week to week. Uh, forget the 18. Just getting 11 out there consistently is, is a major challenge. Uh, I hesitate to say that there's really anything to say about this subject beyond the fact that like it is what it is and we sort of know what we have at this point. But... Um, you know, what's your take kind of based on, I mean, I saw you Saturday night out. Um, what's your take? What's your take on the vibe with the team? I honestly think it's about as good as you would expect for how bad they've been. I mean, they've just had no positive reinforcement at all 
for months right. at this point. And again, there's not an easy answer on the way. It's just got to be maddening. I think that Christian Roldan really seemed like he kind of was feeling it Summed afterwards it up. Yeah. Um, in ways that he hasn't shown before. But I really don't get a sense that anyone within the locker room is revolting or anything. It's just, again, it is what it is. And they're just kind of going to have to Like not revolting down in a good fort. way or a bad way. Just they're Either. There. They're if just they kind of hanging on. Nice. And it's not that they're like entirely apathetic either. It's just like there's nothing no. at some point. There's just not a lot you can do, honestly. Yeah. And I would say and we, we sort of talked about this last show a couple weeks ago. I, I don't feel like there's the apathy thing like we were feeling. We did talk about that because it was like it wasn't like that moment with who's it? Tyrone Mears in Kansas City. SKC, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't like that where you felt it for a minute right. there like a couple of weeks. Brad Evans getting red cards and or double yellows, whatever, like, you knew something was up. This doesn't feel like that. It just feels like they're not resigned to it, but they're in it, and they're like, we're doing everything we can. It's not enough. It's definitely a malaise, I would say, as has set in at this point. Yeah, I mean, it's not making it better. Like, nothing's making it better, ultimately. Yeah. And this, it's not going to make anyone feel better at all, like, maybe even worse, but it does remind me of the stretch in 2016, Whenever they played on the East Coast at the exact same time, they had that long road trip, and that's kind of where everything started to come to a head that year. Yeah. So this is going to kind of be a telling stretch off the field. Because on the field, I don't think a whole lot's going to change anytime soon, but if they stay unified through that, being stuck together on a plane to New York, yeah. and that whole deal for a couple of days, I feel like that's going to be an important stretch for that part of it. And I, I, for me, in that kind of situation, and having played team sports in life, uh, you do need a, a person or two who can kind of keep it together and is reading the room. And maybe that's Roald Dan, maybe it's Steph. Um, I, I think they have those players. I guess the problem is, does it get to the point where they just go, it's not going to matter what I say or do or act, you know, how I act. It's just, this is what it is. Yeah. And that's, I think, my fear is that are we at that point already and it's barely June. Yeah, and that's why they need something here. And, I mean, if you want to look positively, um, Victor Rodriguez looked like probably the Sounders' best player off the bench in his little bit of impact. Lodero's coming back probably <laughs> at some point. Um, and so... We'll talk about that later. <laughs> but I do think they need to have something tilt in the right direction here at some point. Or and it could just be a goal. Like, truly, like, you never know. You see that stuff. A goal happens. Uh, maybe that just changes the mood for a minute. Uh, because they haven't even had them, like, they haven't even had an offside call on a goal where they celebrated for 10 seconds and then had the goal call back. Like, it's just been nothing. Yeah. Uh, did they have a shot on goal this weekend? I don't, I, think, I don't so. think they did. Did they? Did that count? Uh, I okay. thought that they did not count. If you're talking about the Alex Roldan. I thought, that oh, I thought it was off target. That as yeah. a goal, actually. Yeah. I'm pretty I sure did enjoy, though, that I was in the middle of something and I got to the bar a little bit late and then I walked up, said hi to Sean Wheeler, looked up and leered him, immediately booted across to no one, <laughs> straight through everything off to the far side. And I was like, oh, at least we're consistent as a team. Like, Definitely on brand. Yeah. So, like, when we get forwards. I don't know what that those are, but uh, maybe that will change. I don't know. Were you at practice today? Yes. Uh, was Bruin out there? No, pretty much no one was out there. Oh, yeah, it was, it was a there. regen it was, session. Yeah, it was a regen yeah. day. Very few of the starters were out there. Right. Ozzy was going through the paces, but otherwise no real starter potential out there. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't know what they're going to do uh, for the next four weeks, I guess. I mean... Uh, we were talking that the transfer window doesn't even open until July. So um, Spencer said, you know, a couple of weeks ago that this is the team that's going to have to grind through. So that's what well, and it's just it's dealing the, with from the next. It's the World Cup ish. break, and it's like Saturday. Well, I'm sorry, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, ten days, <laughs> uh, seven days, Portland, four days, Colorado, like, and then the transfer window opens. Cool, so. Uh, I mean, it's what was the question? Rose Slay Day. Why does the portal so. happen when it does? Because that's when the that's when the sparkling rosé is available. Yeah, I, Portland's got a couple guys too. 
Both sides will be hammered. I have no idea why they played it during the World Cup because you're hampering two of your best teams in the marquee I mean, matchup. It doesn't. Well, I think there's. It's. I think it's just a TV TV yeah. deal. They want to yeah. block it with a uh, with the World Cup game. Yeah. And goose the ratings. I yeah. That's like what's what one one thirty. Other reasoning. Yeah. yeah. That's going to be a crazy day. World Cup. Sounders <laughs> Portland, rain Portland. We are actually all going to die. <laughs> In fact, if the Sounders continue this level of play, Oof. none of us are going to make it to noon. <laughs> so, anyway, so, I mean, rough, rough stretch. Thankfully, it's against not the best teams in the world. Uh, you know, DC, DC, Chicago. Colorado in there, too, on the fourth. Uh, who is, what, yeah. one of six teams in all, like, top tiers of... <laughs> professional soccer below the Sounders right now. <laughs> One of the others is S2, which and Dave Clark did have a really money statement and it was like, two are in Oklahoma City, which is okay. Okay, I saw that. And everybody it's was just like, groan. I'm like, I'm going to close this browser window right now, was, Dave Clark. Uh, absolutely awful. But, you know, you come into a season like this and you're like, oh, World Cup break is going to happen. Maybe we'll be fine, whatever. Bunch of games. The team's not great, so you feel worse. So you kind of want to play a bunch of games, but you kind of don't want to play any games. I don't know. I this feels like such a can't a non win for everybody. Uh, so I mean, what's this like? Have you done this kind of thing before, other than Sounders, from a sports like covering a team where it's just all of it not great? Honestly, no. This is about as dire as it's gotten. I have been lucky with some of the teams. Like whenever I was in college, yeah. Ohio football and basketball were both very good the entire time, so that helped. And then yeah. I was covering preps, and you pick the best handful of teams in your area. But those only ones are getting covered anyway. So yeah. yeah. And so yeah, it's just been Sounders, and I don't know. I mean, they, they got to win this weekend, right? Got to score at least. If they're going to score mean, against anyone, so. it's got to be against DC. DC, DC is awful. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Um, although. That guy's probably going to be the starting U.S. keeper <laughs> at the rate he's going. So, uh, but but talking about D.C., you know, D.C. was a, a moment last season. Uh, I mean, we were we were in the section. You know, we're going to win four mm-hmm. three, which was fun. And then, of course, we got greedy and we're like, we're going to win five three. And yeah, no, that didn't work out. But that was a moment. Like, you know, every season's got one or two of those where. You know, the door turns a little bit um, or opens up for you. Uh, I don't want to think about what happens if they go down 3 nothing. Oh, in that game. Well, so that's been joked about online. Yeah. People are like, there's not going to be anyone in the stadium if it's 3 nothing, DC. Yeah. Cool. Sweet, no beer lines. <laughs> Mark with the You're upside. You're still paying $11 for a beer. Yeah, well. Mark's like, I charge it. I didn't. I forgot. <laughs> so, anything other than Victor positive to come out of this weekend? No, not really. <sighs> I don't really think there was really much of anything, honestly. And again, like, Lodero potentially coming back is a genuine positive for them, yeah. even though it's a huge bummer for him personally. So, since we really don't need to recap the game any further... Uh, why don't we talk about Ladero for a second? So, you know, we, we were chatting about this briefly before, but uh, no clear plan for him to come back. Has while he hasn't made the twenty-three, he hasn't been released completely from them. They have a friendly on Thursday, which feels weird for him to play in. Uh, I feel like he's probably still injured, and this is just him rehabbing in a place where it's comfortable. You know, with trainers he trusts or whatever it is but um is there any insight or intel on what's going on i honestly don't know um my educated guess is that they're just giving him a little bit of time because whether he's hurt or not i mean this was a huge thing for him professionally to be able to do this again he's been focusing on this for years i mean even right. going back to when he signed with the sounders he like cleared it with his coach to make sure he could potentially play in this world cup so to not make it is rough for him and so I just think that they're probably just going to give him a little bit of time anyway. Probably still a little bit injured. Yeah. That 10-day break doesn't do much good for anyone. But this is an instance where you can give him an extra week 
to kind of get right and come back. And that, I think, is what I would do. Yeah, we've not, we've not had a diagnosis, a formal yeah. diagnosis of what his injury is. They've talked, said broken toe. Yeah. But beyond that, I don't know what they've... Right, which what, there are grades yeah. of broken toe. Yeah, yeah. We've all exactly. played something on a broken toe once or twice, but, you know. And what, uh, what are we talking about? It's been like a month since that uh, injury, about, about that. give or take. Yeah. So yeah. assuming it's, you know, a six to eight week injury, that would... Put him a right of round Portland, I guess. So, if there's nothing nefarious happening mm-hmm. on that front, um, do you think he potentially is available for next? Was it next Wednesday? So a week from Wednesday at Red Bulls. I would be if, surprised if he comes back in time to for, make the cross country trip. Away. Um, and especially with the buy right after that, right? We'll I think the extra week or two weeks. Yeah, I think there's a pretty good shot that he plays at home against Chicago on the 23rd. Okay, and then they kind of go from there. So two more very very dire games probably. <laughs> Do maybe you, on the other side of that, is it? Does it matter that he's at home right now when it comes to like a potential team close to home coming after him and him being that? you know, that level of proximity from those teams? Like, is that any better or worse than him being here right now? Like, does it matter? I don't think it would make that much of a difference. I think he probably has his mind tilting one way or the other anyway. Already, yeah. Um, And maybe it will tilt it over the edge, but then he would have already been leaning that way regardless. Um, So if he's super committed, he'll be back. And if not, I mean, it's home. So it's you sort of understand that as well. Right. And would he go to a team in Uruguay? Or he'd probably go to Boca. That sounds like I, I would one. think back to Argentina yeah. somewhere would probably be the play if that were to happen. I mean, I think probably the best case scenario for the Sounders is just have him come back, give them one more whatever it is, yeah, good push through this year, and then kind of have his legacy secure here. Right, head back. Well, and you way. don't want to get transferred off an injury. Yeah, you know, no one really does. I mean, every so often somebody wants to be in that situation, but. I don't think that's what he would choose. No, and the no. Sounders certainly wouldn't choose to have to fill another TP slot in the, for sure. of the season. So for sure. I think Although, be you know, we like hard. to just leave them, so <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> yeah. We'll just we'll have one open. It's cool. Two. Yeah. <laughs> it would be two. No. <laughs> yeah, so I think that I think he'll be back at least for a while. Um, but I don't have a huge read one way or the other on whether that changes this summer or not. So... Uh, coming back to this match and sort of players that are or not are not available, what's up with Felix Chenkum? Do we know? In terms of what? Is he hiding? Is he, <laughs> is he, is he just not? It was uh, an interesting decision not to even like put him in the team. And then he was nowhere for a minute. Yeah. Um, I think Schmetzer is a guy who takes time to win over. I mean, he just kind of has his guys, and that's sure. why you see him turn to Lamar. Lamar Nagel. On the hour mark thing, because he's just a guy that he knows and trusts <laughs> and has been around forever. And so I think that young guys always ha- kind of have a tough go okay. in terms of breaking in. Um, but I haven't gotten a read on if it's anything deeper or more problematic than It might that. just be we chose to not put him in the 18, move yeah. on, get over it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, match coming up on Wednesday. Sacramento's no slouch ultimately when it comes down to it. Uh, Especially I'm, considering the team we're going to be sending yeah, down there. I'm yeah. sure they would be happy to womp on Sounders at any level. Uh, what's your take on, on Open Cup and how the Sounders are approaching it? I mean, like I told you beforehand, I think that if they could forfeit and not have the fan base revolt, they would just forfeit because <laughs> they're just at the, they don't have enough bodies. Right. The morale's not great. They're going to need everything that they have in order to make a real push at the playoffs. So are we kind of getting like S2? Maybe. Oh, probably. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 Maybe. Yeah, they may, may, yeah. But, it, but that's the thing, though. It's like typically you use that to get some guys some run that haven't been playing, and they've been trying everyone. Right. It's not like you have guys that are like right. wasting away on the bench. So I don't even really know what you do there. So will Dempsey coach the team? Is that what we think is going to happen? He's allowed in the stadium. He's still suspended for another uh, one no game. Right? I order, but I he's think. allowed in the stadium, I think, isn't he? He could be on the touchline. I don't know. Are you sure with bands? I don't, I don't think he's allowed. Yes, I don't think he's allowed, actually. He's got oh, maybe he'll be in the supporter section. This game. He, they just need to win this game. 
one more Dempsey Open Cup against Portland at Star Five. Yeah, that'd be hilarious. Yeah. Which, that, that would make for we're gonna need some narratives. Good times over the next couple weeks. Oh, fine. Daniel that Radford. Happening. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> They're definitely. You know, they would be like, Radford's unavailable. Do it anyway. They would just, yeah. Uh, that would be interesting to say the least. So that's really hard to even acknowledge the fact that that's what you think their perspective might be. Um, So, like, does anything else change between now and the weekend? Is it just more of the same? You hope somebody isn't injured. Let's try and survive the week. Like, is that where we are right now? Yeah, honestly. (laughs) What else could change? Survive a week and a half. And I think that the one bright spot is that Victor Rodriguez looked relatively good. pretty good. good. Mm. And it's just like that. Well, one of my things with soccer that always baffles me a little bit is that teams like accepting the draw away from home as a default and then being like, oh, maybe we'll exceed that. Yeah. And so playing at home, they're going to have to try because they can't go out there and entirely play for it because DC is not going to try to score either. And so they, right. they pretty much will have to try to attack in a way that, hey, I think it's going to be better. I think they're going to win on Saturday. I will say that. Okay. Which. They need some kind of positive moment. I I think a lot of people. I don't think that him saying that's going to jinx it. (laughs) There might already be a jinx. Uh, (laughs) Max, Max in the comments says, "Unpopular opinion: Let's punt the season and go all in on Open Cup." I don't know. I'm kind of with Max. Uh, DC did it. uh, Oddly enough, uh, what 2013, the worst season in the history of MLS, and they won US Open Cup, and then they were good for the next. You know, two years or so, so that may be something to get being a relative. Yeah, term yeah they made the playoffs. So, uh, yes, was that <laughs> when uh, what's his face at Ben Olsen? Yeah, had just taken over, and didn't he have like the worst? Wasn't it like the worst? Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, I think they only won three games, yeah, or something like awesome. something along those lines. I mean, we could still beat that. Yeah, we're, <laughs> like, <laughs> we are on pace to surpass <laughs> that, fortunately. <laughs> cool. Let's not even talk about that because that sounds horrifying. <laughs> Uh, can you even imagine the Sounders with two wins in July? I'd be like, huh? I think that would cause some uh, personnel changes. We are not going to do it. Yeah. Uh, um, so what else do we want to talk about, guys? <laughs> well, since we were sort of talking about Dempsey relatively, yeah. I was talking to you about this the other day. Um, it's sort of I'm very this is a good topic. I'm very curious as to five years in sort of what Sounders fans feel about Clint Dempsey in terms of his overall Seattle legacy. Just because he was brought in as this marquee, game-changing signing, done some good things. People seem to be loyal to him to some degree, yeah. but I'm sort of curious as to what Sounders fans as a whole think of his tenure in Seattle. Uh, well, I wouldn't, you know, personally speaking, I, you know, he's been good, obviously done a lot of good things but he hasn't i don't know if endear is the right word but he hasn't you know he doesn't do any you know events that aren't marketed uh by the sounders uh so he's not doing you know signings or stuff like that so uh you know he he's got his own thing he's got you know four kids so he's got you know he's got a life that he's got to take care of but he's just not one of those guys who's been uh like levesque or zach scott who have kind of gone the extra step, I guess, is the way to put it. And so I don't think there's been a connection there with the fans um, so much as with some of the other players, um, which, you know, is fine. That's his prerogative. But I think that's just something that's going to – there's always going to be a distance there between the fan base and Dempsey. And do you think that that will change in any way how he's remembered here when you look back five years from now? Mm-hmm. Will people remember just the goals and that's it, or will they remember that there was a little bit of a, a disconnect there? Oh God, that's tough to say. I, you know, that's just my personal opinion. Yeah. I, I would say, yeah, there'll be something of a disconnect. People will appreciate what he's done, absolutely, um, but he, he's not going to be on the the wall of fame as far as uh, you know, maybe through ECS. Uh, as far as the fan base there, he's not going to be one of the top guys that people re- remember as far as that's concerned. So I don't know. It's yeah. just, I think there's, a, I think there's a distance there yeah. uh, between the fans and him. Adam, do you have a point of view? I'm 
not fully paying attention. <laughs> I'm reading the tweet, the chat. There's actually quite a, quite a few uh, opinions in the chat, so I will read those as the producer. I don't have to have an opinion. I can read other people's. Um, so, wow, there's actually quite a few. But, uh, yeah, people are saying very happy with him, pretty good overall. This extra year with hindsight was a mistake. Um, based on he played last year, the pay he cut he took, I felt this year was a reasonable signing. Um, I, and I like John, John Worthington says, goals, trophies, red card wedding, the moments, there's a lot to remember. Yeah. And I, I would fall in line with that. Like, you know, he might not be out there, you know, at uh, Yacht Con or whatever, mm-hmm. but he's given us a lot to remember. Yeah. Good mm-hmm. and bad. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> but he's, he's added to the lore quite a bit. Yeah. In yeah. good ways. That is absolutely not to say that he's uh, been a bad, right? Uh, you know, <laughs> off the field or anything like that. It's just it's, it's not the same as with some of the other Sounders players. Yeah. That's interesting. I hadn't even thought about yeah. sort of the the narrative. I mean, he does sort of have a flair for adding to some mm-hmm. of those elements of it, right? Mm-hmm. In the way that he loved to play against Portland, yeah, yeah, and mm-hmm. those type of things. I think yeah. that you're right. To have somebody sure. like that who's played on a global, like truly on the global stage, to come in and be like, "Fuck Portland." immediately is pretty awesome like all in on that stuff and that's pretty cool and again like if you've had the pleasure to meet him pretty kind of chill reserve guy like not what you might expect if you if you only knew like on the field soccer deuce and then you met him you'd be like are you the same person because he's like he's just a different individual um and that's super cool because there are tons of people who are like that yeah you know like obafemi martin's is nuts on the field, but like we could just sit here and he'll just like hang out and like have a nice casual conversation, and you would never know that he's Christian's like that way. You look at him on the star. field and he's yeah, just he's in everybody's face. Down. Yeah, yeah. And you sit next to him, he's like, I'm gonna take some of your pizza. And I think that there's there is a perception thing there where where like the players who are just kind of middle of the road or like are you know average from a persona or attitude on the field might be the same or actually better off the field, whereas Deuce is like the whole reverse and because he's played at the you know, national team and yeah. in Europe like the perception is just different so yeah. like he's raised his own profile so then when he isn't what the rest of the people are like I text Taylor Graham for fun I'm like hey I saw so and so like that's weird you know like mm. I'm we're telling Stefan Fry that he's like posted a phone number of accidentally on his Wrinkle Wednesday the other day like that's the world we live in and Clint Dempsey's not in that yeah like wheelhouse so we all again have this like luxury in Seattle of access and yeah. other cities have it but we definitely have it and I would say it spans most sports it's not every sport and it's not every player like most people are not hanging out with Russell Wilson and Ciara talking about Portland by the way fuck that investment <laughs> Anyway, uh, different discussion. Um, but I, I, I think from a, like, the lore is maybe the right word. Like, 20 years from now, somebody's going to talk about Red Card Wedding, and it's a good fucking story. And it will be then, just like it is now. Like, it's miserable. We have that but, oral history but you do. <laughs> but you tell people about it, and... Like, it's a classic story. Like, we've all got, like, I have stuff that from that, from going to Yankees games in the 80s, like, crazy things that have happened, you know? And, like, I think that's on that level. Yeah. And I, I don't think he'll ever, in a good way, like, live that down. Like, it won't go away for him. Um, I think the challenge right now is he's, he had such a luxury of playing with, like, Oba and other people like Nagel was just a monster in 2014 yeah away. like they got those guys got double covered both of them Nagel's like I am available to score these goals right now also have assists <laughs> and you know that was amazing and like the challenge is I think people especially people who don't just watch soccer don't mostly watch soccer you expect Dempsey to be the you know the giver of all life for your team and he's not necessarily that player yeah maybe especially he maybe now. isn't yeah, ever maybe even then yeah yeah but he's never had to be that player all the time does that guy come up big absolutely i said to you on saturday night like you're clint dempsey coming in, in the 70 60th 70, 70th minute absolutely angry deuce who a didn't start and maybe he wasn't okay with it and he's gonna come in and just beast people for 30 minutes like i am super good with that yeah 
you know, and I, I think we'll always have that. But I think the, I might, I feel like the team not being great at the same time that there was a perception that he should have been carrying the team on his own um, does hurt him in the long run and it doesn't necessarily go like all the way downhill, maybe kind of what Mickey's talking about. But I think the, the stories and the lore and like that stuff, like you'll always have Deuce, you know, we'll, we'll always have Dempsey watch. Like there's so many crazy ass things that aren't just going to airports or, you know, Starfire. Like let's just talk about the fact that Clint Dempsey and Obafemi Martins played at Starfire. <laughs> like that's super fun, you yeah. know, and that's something that we, we, that will never go away ultimately and uh i think the portland thing actually really helps him yeah ultimately oh, especially totally. with supporters Absolutely. because we're like oh i don't love you like there are people who are like not my favorite person not my favorite player whatever but he hates portland i am in <laughs> yeah and it was funny because uh after portland had won mls cup and i don't remember who will johnson or somebody yeah, like, oh, yeah immediately yeah, yeah. went to talk about seattle we were like, let's just have no players do that. <laughs> and the deuce is on, on the stage yeah. at Seattle Center, and he's like, Portland can't say shit. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I can't believe you did it. But that's fucking cool. Yeah. That's Dempsey. Dempsey. Good job. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, you know, you get over that stuff. But, uh, you know, he's a normal guy who's spectacular at soccer. And um, in the grand scheme of things, is he Felix? No. But he's not Sean Figgins, you know? Yeah. It's not, like, all-star player that comes to your team that, like, bombs. He's nowhere near that. Oh, yeah, no. You know, he's, he's a guy who, you know, you'd have to compare. I think you could compare to players in other sports and kind of get a, a vibe for, like, where he would fall. But I think amongst the people that are hardcore about Sounders, deuce is deuce, and you sort of, like, you have to take the bad with the good. Yeah. Um, he's, not, he's not hurting himself right now. Uh, directly, he's uh, bearing the brunt of the suffering. Yeah, because of the you know stature of the team right now. Yeah, is my take. No, for sure. Yeah. No, and yeah, and all of that is that makes sense for sure. Yeah, and right now I just think he's there's they're kind of doing him a disservice in the same way that I also feel like they kind of did to Lodero too, in allowing him to just get knocked out of games for two yeah. years. Now he misses the World Cup. Cause yeah. Guys, so that's kind of a bummer with that too. You know, um, and he just doesn't have enough around him, and you can't expect that from Dempsey yeah. right now. It's like a team building strategy. He can't start every game. Right, he just can't. And but he has to because they don't have anybody else. Which you know, and it's it's a tough one because I he's the guy's a gamer. Like I don't see him unless he's legit hurt or legit like someone else right now is in a better position than me. They should be playing or I want that kid to get minutes or whatever it is. Like I, I can see that being part of his, his game or his deal. Um, but I, I, he's got to know it, but on the other hand, be like, wow, shit, I'm the grown up here. Yeah. Do I need to step up and make this happen? And that's gotta be hard. You know, it's not like, I don't think he looks at himself like on the downside of his career, but I do think the team not making the World Cup the national team might have put a nail in Angry Dempsey yeah. for a minute. And that sucks. You yeah. know? And that's why my fear is for Ladero, it's that same situation. Yeah. Now, it worked for Oba Femi Martins. Yeah. You know, the other way. Like, if we, if we could all play the Oba Femi Martins World Cup every year, we would all totally do that. Uh, and maybe that's what we get from a Ladero. You know, knock on wood. But... Uh, I think that hurt Dempsey a lot, just personally, because, again, he, he was a mainstay on the team. He wasn't, like, an also-ran on the national team. Like, big-time player. Yeah. You know, and it just, it's got to hurt. Yeah, for sure. So the question is, is this his last year? And is it his last In year general? Year? I, I tend to think yes. I would think so. I mean, it depends on what they do in the summer. I mean, if he's going to stay on this contract and they don't have a whole lot of other DP options, maybe. And I don't know. I, I would say no. I would say that. But I also didn't even think he was going to come back this year. I didn't year, think so honestly. either. I didn't think so either. Um, just because he is, I will say, 
very, like, I don't think that he's the player that becomes the coach. Just in terms of, like, his style and, and that type of thing, he just doesn't seem to have that personality. But you yeah. never know. I mean, know. Jermaine Jones <laughs> is coaching. It's true. And that doesn't make any sense to me. I don't, <laughs> like, like, maybe linebacker. Like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I could see Clint being a very good, like, youth Sunday league coach. Totally. Like, he's always totally. been really good about, like, interacting with kids. Like, he would be great just out at some random park leading the way. I just don't see him ever wanting to take over, like, a professional-ish team. And, like, dude's taken enough time away from his fam yeah, that he can just park it for a couple of years and not do anything. He definitely does not need the money for it, but... Uh, yeah. He's yeah, going to buy a ranch in, like, South Texas and disappear entirely. Uh, that's a there's a pretty high chance that 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 is the case. I don't think he'll buy um, a ranch. He's gonna buy a fishing cabin. Yeah, that's about yeah. nice. <laughs> um, Megan Megan points out though that uh, Dempsey did improve Sounders beard game, and that's capital S, capital B, capital G. What did you say significantly? Exponentially. Exponentially. So Sounders beard game did go up. It's true. If only that helped. It I mean, doesn't? It, it's not helping the Vegas Golden How Knights How many beers right do we now. have right now? <laughs> let's, just, let's just be clear about that. What's the score of that? It was 3 nothing when I yeah. walked out, and I was yeah. like, I'm going to just That's go outside. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Walk, please walk away from the vehicle. Uh, Talk about that, too. Like we want to just stay we, off random topic. I mean, how, do, how do Sounders fans feel about the Vegas Golden Knights? Stealing, they setting the, the bar. Stealing the throne yeah. of like, the great expansion team that the Sounders <laughs> I, always um, sort of... They always liked having that mantle. I'm kind of okay with it. Yeah. I actually think the Sounders set a really big high bar. Yeah. Forget just the first, like the first season, just first 10. Like you set a crazy bar for expansion in any sport. And making the Stanley Cup Finals in year one is really hard. Like if you know anything about hockey, it's, I know, again, a lot of teams make the playoffs or whatever. You get the shit beaten out of you. And you get to the playoffs, and, like, the injury reports are, like, upper body injury. Meanwhile, it's like you have three broken ribs and, like, whatever. Upper body injury. And that's so you don't, like, tell anybody what's actually wrong with you, you know? And I, that, it's amazing. And, like, it, I never put it past Vegas ever to do anything. And we should talk again about Vegas, which we did last time, too. But because uh, that's going to be... The best worst away trip of all time, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, it's amazing. Like gen, like as a sports fan. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't want to get somebody brought up the Lester. Who was it? Oh, uh, Jeremy Roenick talking with Sting and Shaggy, who by the way are on tour right now. Six two was the final. Caps. I hate the Caps. Yeah, I don't um, like them much either. Uh, Sting and Shaggy were doing. The pregame uh, concert outside, what is it? It used to be MCI. What the hell is that arena called? <laughs> in Vegas. Anyway, Vegas no, in, in D.C. In DC. Okay. And Sting and Shaggy apparently did an album. I just work here. And they're talking, they're talking to them about sports. And, of course, the Jamaican bobsled team came up. And I was like, okay. And then they talked to Sting. And I guess he likes Lester. So it went straight to the Lester thing, and I'm like, while analogous, it's not at all the same thing. You know, it it would be like Cardiff <laughs> winning the Premier League this this next season. Like it's not happening, and that's what this is like. And expansion draft is a thing, and like the way you acquire players in these leagues um, is different, you yeah. know, than it was way back when, and the pool of players and access to players and scouting and all that is just so, so different. But like they went hard at like every single moment. Like the pregame show goes hard, the postgame show goes hard, the arena's cool. It sucks to have ice in Las Vegas. I don't know, like Dallas couldn't figure out ice in Vegas is like we got this. I've been to a couple games there, and it's definitely a raucous atmosphere. Um, and they're, you know, they're, they were all in pretty much from the start. So it was pretty cool to see that whole scene. Uh, my brother is a season ticket holder down there, so he's been you know, nuts about the whole thing ever since the start. And it's just one of those things you can never imagine that's going to happen 
in a first tier. So it's been pretty cool to watch. Obviously, they're having some, <laughs> some issues now. So I don't know if they're going to be able to pull back from 3-1. But it's still a great story and a great oh, ride. Sure. And so, crazy. yeah, so either way, I think, you know, it's an unqualified success. So uh, for I mean, sure. Yeah. Business and uh, on the ice, like, it just feels like a really great thing for them. Yeah. 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 Um, I do want to talk about Las Vegas and then we have some fun things that Adam's got <laughs> queued up for us to talk about. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what the official number is. 62. 62 people are going to Las Vegas. And I ha, was that development since the last show? I think it was. What, the, the, the total? Pool, the pool party? Uh, yeah, that was uh, since so the last show. Since, so it's on the day of the original weird, deadline... Way. ECS sold 23 tickets. <laughs> and it has since continued to sell. Uh, and then over the weekend, Mickey found out that Naughty by Nature was playing an all-day pool party at the Flamingo at 9 a.m. The day of the Sounders 2 game. The day of the game. The Las game's Vegas. at 8. Yeah. We're going to be fi- fine. Fine. <laughs> hmm? $15 to get in, yeah. 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 So, so needless to say, <laughs> there is an early arrival on Friday morning group, and then there is a who are going to catch some World Cup. Yeah. The rest of us are going to have naughty by nature World Cup games. Llamas. Mm-hmm. That's a little later. We do have a pre-match meeting supposedly with the llamas which do we really jj i didn't even know this uh jj had had arranged so i don't think it's like a private party llama thing but they are bringing the llamas to us or something yeah all Uh, we know is llama introductions are happening the selfie game is going to be dumb i i I, I did not know about this. This is uh, yeah. this is a, a very interesting development. Uh, for those who don't know, we're talking about the Las, La- Las Vegas uh, Lights USL team. Sounders 2 are playing them on June 16th, which is a week from Saturday. Uh, and there's an insane amount of ECS going down for that game. And the deadline is, is yeah. Wednesday, I think? Oh, yeah. Uh, Wednesday at noon. Is it? Yeah, June 6th. Yeah. Uh, if you want to buy tickets to, and, and join us down there. so uh, If you just want to go to Vegas... You can also do that. Flights are still like two hundred and twenty dollars round trip, which is insane. The problem is, I've I've been to Vegas in the last twelve months, so I'm yeah. good. You <laughs> tapped out. <laughs> yeah, I went three times in four weeks once, oh. and it was the best worst month I've yeah, ever I had went, in my whole life. I went twice in two weeks. It was I doubled up. Bad. Two weeks, I like doubled up, went back, doubled oh. up, and then was like, I'll take a week off, and then I went again. And do you know what I didn't do? Drink anything. Win any money. Oh, well, the last win time. any money. I was negative money that last time. <laughs> <laughs> but I did have a really good dinner. Okay. Well, the Vegas, the, the thing, the Vegas license has been pretty interesting to watch, just generally speaking. I mean, uh, from a same deal, like from yeah. a marketing, like just in general. Yeah. They are all over that stuff. Let's not even talk about the emojis on the inside of their <laughs> jerseys. Um, Max did jump out and point out they had made a couple signings the other day, one of whom yeah. was Zach Mathers. Mm-hmm. Remember that guy? Yeah. So you know what that means, right? Zach Mathers is going to be like, I'm scoring from here. <laughs> it does. Freddie is there. Freddie. Yeah, Freddie do. Should be. Uh, that'll be very interesting. Did by the way, I see that Sammy Ochoa scored a header. Yes. Like a week or two ago. At the world. We're in Trump universe, so everything is longer. <laughs> this show has been three days. Trump so adjusted <laughs> time. There was a clip. You did see it. It did happen. So, other than us all perishing in Las Vegas. Yeah, it's 100 degrees right now, by the way. Like now, right? <laughs> we'll probably be okay. Yeah. No, we're you are definitely going to die. I'm staying home. <laughs> are you coming to Vegas yet? I'm did you decide? Not. Come on, Matt. I didn't know that was a date. I asked you the other day. I told you then that I'm not going. And you definitely (laughs) said you were not going. Yeah, 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 there we go. Look how excited you are. There's llama excitement. 
I am pretty excited about the llama thing. That is, uh, there's no doubt. Just one little sidebar on the Marin and Moose thing. Uh, one of my favorite things about Safeco, soon to not be Safeco, is the front of, of the stadium. Uh, so on first, where they just have the like action pictures of the, or the pictures of the players standing with that to the action pictures. And the first couple times you see it, if you're new to Seattle or whatever, you walk by and it's like Robinson Cano, Felix, whoever, Moose. <laughs> and Moose is just like. <laughs> and you're like, what are you even doing here? And that's like. Again, like you just you know your audience so well that you're like, we're putting the moose in there. And who's the player who gets left out of that? Aren't you like super <laughs> yeah, pissed yeah. off? Yeah. Like moose. <laughs> anyway, uh, Max is upset. He's shooting a wedding. I mean, shooting photography at a wedding. I'm guessing. You never know. It's a new world. So, gotta gotta clarify. <laughs> um, so we've got S two at Vegas next week. S two at home this week. Sunday. Yes. Sunday. We'll see if anyone... Yes? What's ECS doing um, for this home game? The question is, what is ECS doing for this home game at S2? At the moment, ECS is attending the match. He is. Yes. Inside the stadium? ECS is always... Just assume <laughs> that ECS is attending the match. <laughs> <laughs> I can't speak for what may or may not happen during said attendance, pre-attendance, or post-attendance. There is a group, however, that wants to, what does Nate call it, uh, Cheapskate Hill? Yes. There is a group, a contingent, that would like to view the game from Cheapskate Hill out at uh, yeah. Foss Fos High School. At Foss High School. You can see. Yeah. It's far, but. Uh, so we'll see. With or without forks, that's a great question. <laughs> Don't have a good answer the to that. Yes. Um, really there's, <laughs> yeah. So anyway. Uh, Let's go to that uh, Tyro Mears thing, if oh, you would. I play Is that I, all the way on the other end? No, I've got that, like, right here. Cool. Right, this button. That one. Ready? Go! Great attempts! So you should be seeing it. In, like, a minute. The Wi-Fi's going to be slow. Yeah. Um, so, was there a reason you wanted to show this? Former, former sounder. <laughs> Tyrone, former Bolton Wanderer. Tyrone Mears with a absolutely devastating screamer baller goal. If you don't vote for that as goal of the week, at least. I might bookmark that for goal of the year because it was dumb. It was pretty ridiculous. One. Although he's good for those. What was he doing years. shooting from there? He some good vibes ahead of the DC. Yeah, right? He single-handedly won that game He did, that. absolutely. He did. A similar strike. And to me, it's like, one, it's that he took that shot through two, three defenders. Two, you beat a really good keeper. Yeah. Uh, which is maybe the bigger part of that whole thing. Uh, I mean, great on him to see that opportunity. Um, that's actually part of the reason that I think people liked him as a player pre-Sounders. Like, he's that kind of guy who will take that opportunity and isn't just going to lay off and defer. Yeah. It's like, nope, I'm on offense right now. Well, he's taking the corner kicks for uh, Minnesota United this year, so... I, I just, very like, interesting. devastating yeah. goal. <laughs> so, amazing. It's also very Minnesota United that they score that goal and still lose. <laughs> still throws 3-1. Yeah. No <laughs> comment. How, how do you not use that for any kind of positive <laughs> moment? <momentum? laughs> so, we're going to move on to Adam's favorite segment. And Adam, we're going to let you read, and then we'll react. How's that sound? Sounds great! All right, so we're going to start off with a little tweet from our friend Matt you Oak. You didn't cue it up? No. Oh, is it there? No bumper? I played the bumper. Oh, sorry. The internet's a little slow. Can we play Sonar feed reads tweets. Sonar feed reads tweets. <laughs> All right. So Matt Oak? Yeah. So uh, we asked... Uh, what should we talk about? And, and, and uh, Matt wants us to address the science behind whatever brain flaw makes us drive 30 hours for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> he went to Salt Lake. Yeah. I've if done that trip wondering. twice. Yes. Uh, and both times we've lost. Once in the 2011 playoffs uh, when we lost 3-0. Uh, and then a couple of years later I went down and we lost 2-0. But 
Yeah, that's a good qu- yeah, question. I drove that's two a, years ago, yeah. and uh, let's see. We had ticketing drama. I did have a really, really good, like, 14% alcohol bomber. I had one. <laughs> that was good <laughs> for the rest of the day. Uh, and, um, yeah, I... I don't know. I mean, fun. I enjoy those trips. It's a nice you know, park. It, yeah, it's a nice I like that trip, stadium. Actually, so. uh, it's a, the drive is reasonable. Uh, it's definitely uh, eighty yeah, mile per hour speed limit's worth it for me. Yeah, like the premise of the question reminds me. Like the New Yorkers cover story this week was about the increased amount of people that believe, like, truly believe that the Earth is flat. And then basically the whole point is that, like, you can convince yourself of anything. Yes. <laughs> and I feel like that's pseudo right yeah. Yeah. yeah, the premise of this I could, yeah. yeah, I agree. Salt Lake, is, that was always, like, when people would ask me my favorite road trip in MLS, that's really close. Stadium's beautiful. Good distance. Stadium's cool. The mm-hmm. views from the stadium are super yeah. awesome. You can get outdoors for, like, a day. Yeah. That's your thing. It's a, it's a cool trip. I Can't like that it. trip. Yeah, I, I agree. Utah's fun to a point. Or like Vegas, but I'm in not the completely moving there opposite anytime way. soon. No, actually, totally opposite reasons. Yeah, yeah. What else you got there, Adam? All right. So the pizza savior, uh, he would like to know how the Mariners and the Sounders pulled a Freaky Friday. <laughs> well, it's bound to happen at some point. I mean, that's a great question. Fifteen years. As statistics yes. go, it is bound to happen. Mm-hmm. We're not going with the Lindsay Lohan. Okay. We've we've sidebarred, derailed into which Freaky Friday was better, but let's come back. To I just the know the premise of the movie. I've never seen any any of them. So, so Mickey, you were saying, bound to happen. Yeah, it's, yeah. I think it's just mathematics. Um, it's just math. It was going to happen at some point. The Mariners weren't going to be terrible for the rest of their existence, right? Yeah. I mean, we think. Be, yeah. It hasn't reached the All Star break yet. So yeah. You never know. Mm-hmm. It's going to be really funny if they're dominant through no Robin- Robinson Cano. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like, he can't play in the playoffs, right? I, no, no, he cannot. No, no, he so cannot. what do you cool. do if they keep playing well and he comes back? Do you I, play him? I have to tell you, I don't think you play him. I don't know that you do, because then you get a whole new dynamic going into the playoffs. But i got to tell you, if you have Robinson Cano on the bench at any time, like you just, and it's one of those things where, you just have him stand up in the dugout and like look like he's going to go pinch hit at any time. That's kind of scary. Yeah. People will freak out. So Bobby Valentine would not know what to do in that situation. So uh, I, think, I think if they're legit good, like, you know, they're in a... I don't even know if they have to be 10 over. But if they're like legit running things, I, I don't see how you break that up. It's not 20 games. Yeah. You know, 20 games is a different discussion in most sports. Uh, 80 games? Half, half the year. Later. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it's just the dynamic of not being able to then play in the playoffs, too, because you completely remake your team for another, right. for another month and a half, and then he's gone again. I guess you could use him as a pinch hitter. Maybe that's what I would That's do. what I mean. That's probably what you got to do. Just don't start him. him. Yeah. Just have him be like a soup. Just throw him out there every pinch so often. Like, uh, I don't have there's to an injury, that then guy. you, can, you yeah. can bring him back. He'll hit 20 home runs in the few games that he has at the end of the season, and yeah. that'll be the end of it. But yeah, All right, so the for the next one, we actually have two that are in a similar vein. The first one is from uh, Freeman Mester. Freeman Mester, sure. And uh, he wants to know, what ancient burial ground did the Sounders disrespect to get this cursed? Bonus, describe in detail who slash what happened. Piggybacking on that, Matt Oak says, Brad Evans, look, you don't got to admit it out loud. You can DM me. Did you curse us when you left for SKC? Because, bruh, we're sorry, okay? Please, like, lift the curse or whatever. (laughs) Has he played this year yet? No, he's still recovering from injury. His tweet game is so good. (laughs) He should just get a social media manager job Mm. for fun. Just on the side. For like In N Out Burger. Or maybe something healthier, because yeah. I've <laughs> seen Brad eat. Uh, oh, I forgot the questions. Oh, Indian and Barry. Are we Barry. cursed? Oh, cursed, yes. <laughs> we are definitely in po- <laughs> like Brad Evans' fault. <laughs> OG poltergeist <laughs> levels of burial grounds yeah. right now. And 
I don't think that there's any way to to fix it. We haven't got to the point though where you know the dead bodies are popping out of the swimming pool yet. So June could get ugly. That's for Vegas. Where do I need to bring the holy water? I'm... No one is sure. Speaking of awkward things, did you see that the Ziggy out thing has begun? <laughs> Is it his fault? I mean, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Well, and they gave him all the control this year. Yeah. So it kind of is now. Mm-hmm. Based on it. I mean, that's... Yeah, he, 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 yeah, he, but that team was weird how that didn't work. Structurally flawed, yeah. though. Like, they, they had to, like, tear it down to the studs to remake that team. Like, it's yeah. just like they were always going to be screwed. But they got, you know... Zlatan, so I mean, that's they're entertaining cool. to watch it. <laughs> At least, yeah. yes. All right. So next question, Tropic Sounder wants to know: cake or pie? And I've narrowed it down. So the top is it summer, the best cake is going to be like just chocolate, like chocolate froth, like chocolate. Okay. The best, the best pie is going to be like a Marionberry or a blackberry pie. Those are those are the two. None of those. And I would sad. say, have you I ever left your house? Chocolate yes. cake. <laughs> Marionberry? Hell yes. That's your go-to? My pop for pie? Yeah. Like a blackberry pie, like a summer, like blackberry marionberry pie. Oh, hell yeah. Nope. Strawberry rhubarb. Nope. Some, uh, the worst better. suggestions I've nope. ever heard in my life. I am I down I with literally strawberry do not like rhubarb. Apple pie is the only so, other pie that I like. Apple pie is the only other pie that I like. So those are the choices for me. I'm oh. saying if I had to. Oh, so we've got to like roll through I'm our saying, choices. I'm saying if I'm because oh, that's a better question. I'm choosing between cake and pie, right? And I'm saying my best cake is a chocolate, 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 chocolate okay. cake. My best pie, I would, I would have to go chocolate with the chocolate cake. cake. Chocolate and cake, easy. if you were to pick your favorite between those two, it which would, be would it cake. be? Okay, cake for sure, for sure. Okay, Mickey, what do you got? Uh, I go pie, probably a sweet potato pie. Mmm, delicious. Mom makes a great one. There you go. And you're just going with pie. Yeah. Do you have a cake? Eh, not really. Yeah, I'm not uh, a I would cake go person either. Chocolate, chocolate cake is fine. But okay. I go pie over cake. So what is a cheese? What is a cheesecake considered as the purpose of this question? Uh, that's a great question. Because I would go cheese, pie. like strawberry cheesecake. So that, that would strawberry be my, cheesecake. That's not bad. That's not that, that would be my go-to, and it kind of straddles. And we're letting them have it that it's a pie. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. works. It does have crust. That's fair. Hmm. I'm going to say key lime pie. And, uh, man, cake is hard. How about uh, angel food cake with unlimited <laughs> toppings bar? <laughs> there you go. There you go. No, I, seriously, pie, uh, I would say key lime pie with, like, fresh whipped cream. This time of year? It's, like, all the sugar... And it's, you know, you could just eat the whole thing. All right. So the next topic, which I think we've actually already hit this, but uh, make the case uh, for us that the only thing that still matters this season is winning the Open Cup. Is that an order? <laughs> it's, there's no question that, mark. Make there's case. no please. I, yeah. It I literally is a statement. It's really hard to say. So do like, it. There's a difference between Rick. the only thing that matters and this is the thing we that should we do. Get, or the thing get, we should yeah. do or could potentially do, yeah, they could totally do that. It is an easier hill to climb than even making the playoffs. Forget Supporter Shield, MLS Cup, winning, the, doing anything in the playoffs, whatever. As far as hills, yeah, I think... If you understand basic math, <laughs> right? You would you would agree, uh, but I don't think that's going to happen. So, in a similar vein, we actually have another pub tweeting us. Uh, Doyle's. Doyle's pub from Tacoma wants to know uh, first off what and how much you drank to ease the pain. I'm assuming referring to after Saturday's game, <laughs> and or or. Um, we could still win the U.S. Open Cup. Wait, that's the that's the statement. So, well, yes. Rule. What and how much you drank? We're gonna let Mickey go first. Yeah, I had an Estella uh, post game and a cigar. That that seemed to soothe my nerves after the game. So that works. That's, that's what I went with. 
I had two IPAs. I don't even remember the brewery. <laughs> not good on me. I'm, not, I'm not a good Seattleite when it comes to that stuff, typically. It's actually, an IPA, you're allowed to just be like, I had yeah, an IPA. Just, it's it's yeah. usually just okay. Uh, I had multiple double <laughs> rum, double, rum and diets. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that was good. I'm pretty sure I had a smoothie. Is that all you've been very eating or drinking? No, I... One of these. He's having a second drink. All right, so... Slippish. Slippish. Reveal once and for all how much the front office is paying you and the methods <laughs> by which you receive the top secret talking points. Uh, well, it's obviously Bitcoin. I'll let the lawyer speak. <laughs> it's <laughs> obviously Bitcoin. But Bitcoin, obviously. So that's... Uh, <laughs> All right. But yeah, that's all I got. Oh, hey, look. It's, it's from Kristen. It says, what new thing will I have to take out of my stadium-approved clear bag for the next home match? <laughs> I have a question before we answer this. <laughs> what are you going to put in there? The same stuff I've been carrying for two seasons that all of a sudden they have to see out of the bag. Like a llama? I feel like that's a question bring for Bring more plastic bags. I do not have a plastic bag yeah. that I would ever bring in. <laughs> Put right. a sandwich in foil. They love that. All right, so... Wait, wait, wait. wait you, you. Two things. Okay. One, last home match, uh, there's a guy with just a full metal, metal water bottle outside the south entrance, and he's like, oh, I don't want to have to drink this right now, whatever. And a bunch of us were like, just cover it with your jacket in your bag. And he walks in, puts it down, carrying his kid, walks right through the metal detector. No one even looked at his back. <laughs> Sounds about right. Cool. That was not the end. It was not. It was not. No. Uh, and then uh, Hunch Punch also says, uh, this is easy. He always waits to have his first beer until the sounder score. He saved a lot of money and <laughs> lost 15 pounds. So. <laughs> <laughs> Which is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got the last two, and they are two of a kind. Uh, the first one is uh, from our good friend Dave Clark. He wants us to talk about Mark. I mean, we could talk about Mark. And then our, uh, the second one is our friend uh, Rachel Avery. She wants, to talk, uh, wants us to talk about bananas. Mark is bananas. So huh. take it away, fellas. <laughs> Huh. This is like writing prompts. Uh, Tom, that's on you. Why you uh, I don't really know where one. to start. Do we want to talk about Mark first? Mark's here tonight. Mark's graced us with his presence. He brought presents? If, if only. Oh. I, I mean, there's so many things to talk about, Mark. Mark isn't drunk trying to run the board here at Sonar Feed tonight. He he did, however, drive in like his usual crazy self into the parking lot. I know. It was I don't only, think I heard him as much as I did normally. I definitely heard him. Yeah, maybe I wasn't paying but attention. It's because there was Which no pretty twenty foot puddle right? for you to go through. Plastic. Yeah. Uh, Mark is actually very good at driving off road. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> On the road, <laughs> no <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah. Mark has only taken apart his car to a point where. He couldn't fix it himself without eight hundred dollars at a mechanical facility. Plus a tow. One time, tow. this quarter. <laughs> Mark, Mark did just purchase his flight to Vegas. Oh jeez. <laughs> Winner! There you go. Mark, are you going to Vegas? Yes, sir. I'm going to Vegas. All right, so bananas. <laughs> Uh, they're good for potassium. Yeah, they are good. very good for you. They're, it's a solid food yep. uh, before you go exercise. I, I, I will, I will yes. say that uh, at the beginning of this year, let me back up a little bit. When I was a kid, I ate just bananas like just crazy. The same day and then as I got older, I hated bananas. I've hated bananas for years because I ate them so much as a kid. Um, at the beginning of this year, I, I, I decided there are two foods that I absolutely despise, bananas and celery. And I decided I'm going to do my best to get over that. 
and I've I have successfully gotten over my dislike for bananas. Right. I'm not Celery's quite there tougher. with the celery. There's not. I mean, celery is literally proof that the devil exists and that he hates us. <laughs> uh, you get with the hummus, it's all right, uh, but. It's a side dish. It's never good as a standalone thing. Bananas can stand alone. Celery cannot. Absolutely not. Bananas are the worst ever. Wow, that's a very... That's how I felt up until this year. So thus concludes our... our, uh, Sonar feed reads tweets. Sonar feed reads tweets. Yes. I love that you put that stinger in at the end (laughs) again. I wanted to say it again. Is it Ariel, by the way? Probably. <laughs> it was literally. You broke literally the budget. Like, broke just, the budget yeah, on that one. Just basic, quick, fast. Hey, man. <laughs> so, all right. Let's um. Why is celery in the chat? Because I was talking about celery. Were you not paying attention to me? I was, but okay. like Max, Max is excited about celery. Although I did watch Max eat like. 2,000 pounds of celery yesterday with peanut butter, which is an amazing way to eat celery. Celery is an amazing peanut butter delivery it's system. Not hostile. No, peanut butter is good. Hostile, uh, it has celery is like a bike. You can eat peanut yeah. butter on anything. Celery sucks. It is. It's a peanut butter vehicle. Mm-hmm. Oh, Max right. had to clarify that he's a former wrestler. They eat celery. No shit. <laughs> You're like, oh, it's right. Monday. Yes. Need to get down to <laughs> 109 yeah, right. yeah. by Thursday. Guess I'll eat <laughs> celery. You already lost. Yeah. Anyway. I'm sorry. I was just looking to Adam for advice, and I didn't get any. <laughs> Adam, <laughs> so. uh, celery sucks. Celery sucks. <laughs> Adam's no, I'm good. <laughs> this, is a, this is a very they haven't scored in a month discussion. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is a goal? Celery no is to vegetables what thin mints are to Girl Scout oh! cookies. Oh! 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 Peanut butter delivery systems? <laughs> yeah. I don't totally even get I the actually analogy, don't see honest. the problem at all. <laughs> In fact, if I had thin mints at home, I would I would try and eat peanut butter with them just to see what happened. Maybe. Peanut butter and mint though? It's probably good. I bet it would be. Okay. It's worth a try. Tell me how many things you've put peanut butter on that it wasn't good. Cuz it's low. My balls. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I had a feeling that was coming. Yeah. You, gotta, you gotta walked into that, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> hard, hard left here on the sonar feed tonight. It's taking a very dark turn. Uh, so, so let's make a couple predictions for this week. Uh, Matt, you think Saturday Sounders win? Yes. 1 0? 2 1. 2 1. How many goals? Does Lamar Nagel score? <laughs> zero. Though I would hope. Yeah, I'm going to say zero from him. Who's going to score? That's a good question. Victor's going to score once. Christian's going to score once. Victor. Okay. You think he starts? <laughs> That's a good question. He at least plays a half hour off the bench if he doesn't start. But I could see him starting. All right. So that's Saturday. Um, aside from forfeiting on Wednesday, <laughs> how do you feel that goes? I think they're going to lose, but I have no sense on the score. I don't think they're going to get killed. Maybe one nothing, another one nothing. Stay on brand. <laughs> it is very on brand. S two does it too, so you're not going to say they're going to penalties on on. No, no, okay. No. Just it's tough. take them out of their misery right away. It's tough. It's tough to say who they're going to bring down even for that game. So it's. Yeah, I just don't know who they're going to bring down. Because they're going to bring, they'll probably bring up a couple of uh, S2 guys. Yeah. Um, I can see them taking Nagel down, uh, for example, for someone. Because uh, they're going to need, they need bodies yeah. to, to even play the game. But Alfaro probably gets a start. Uh, who in the midfield? Dallin probably gets a start. Uh, I don't know. They just don't have enough <laughs> bodies to like. Split the team up, so yeah. it's difficult to say. 
But well, they, I don't think it's going to go well. Have 18. Yes, they will have 18. No, we unless they go with 18. Matt's, Matt's 18. plan. Uh, will to, uh, 18 uh, players go to Sacramento? Yes. 18? 18. Yes. No, no. I think I, they. I, I would I, say 16. Yeah, 17. I would say 16. That's my over under 15 and a half. Wow. That's, have you gambled ever? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Once or twice. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, what's your prediction on the game? I'm going to say uh, for uh, Sacramento, uh, I'm going to say 2 nothing Sacramento. Damn. This weekend, however, they will pull it out. I'm going to say 1-0. To the Sounders. Yeah, 1 0 to the Sounders on the weekend. Yes. Uh, the score will be Owen Goal. <laughs> wow. It'd be a very DC United way for yes, that to go yes. down. Yes. We got Dempsey Goal. goal. One nothing. I could see that. Could Adam, see what do you got? I'm going to say that they, they're they going to match their form uh, for all. The, the other games, the whole week, <laughs> and uh, they're gonna win ten nothing. <laughs> Just been saving all of them. <laughs> this is gonna be no, uh, the score line a has primal to have a scream. Mm-hmm. Has to have a one. Ten nothing. <laughs> Just like they have their last two games, ten nothing, eleven nothing. <laughs> We're talking about the Sanders, Sanders women, right? No. 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 We love them too. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No, that is matching their form. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We love them too. <laughs> Yeah, what are they plus three hundred? Yes. They played two games. <laughs> they won ten nothing, eleven nothing. They're playing the Timbers. It's the Timbers women, basically, uh, on Saturday. So, so you don't have a. Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> this is uh, yeah. So yeah. I'm gonna say. So women, uh, women is go ahead. plus. I think we lose Saturday. Yeah. I Saturday. Think it's, really? I'm, I'm sorry. I think we lose Wednesday. Excuse me. I think we lose one nothing Wednesday. Okay. Um, I, I think we draw at home. To who? To DC. Sounders women? No. They win 11 nothing. <laughs> Always. That's what um, I'm trying to figure out right now. Actually, what do you think the, re- the reaction is to a, a draw? A draw? Well, the, a goal happened. So yes, after right. which there will be like a yellow card issued to the club for the number of people that have run onto the field <laughs> to celebrate to celebrate on on the the Chad Marshall free kick amazing goal that the Sounders scored. No, um, I, one one Saturday, which I actually think the reaction will be super negative. Oh, I would absolutely yeah. believe so. Yeah. Because we should beat the shit out of them. Yeah. Very bad. Did, should. Did DC play last weekend? I don't think they did. I didn't factor in, though. It could be a Lamar revenge game, having been dealt away by DC last year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anywho, so that gets us through this week. Uh, Mark is Mark is really excited about his confirmation code. <laughs> is it nice? I mean, it kind of is. Not really, uh, in like a sixteen-year-old kind of way. Okay, you hold it upside down and it says boobies. <laughs> That's literally Adam with his calculator right now. Just write it out. We're like, I got this. Boring. So, so in all seriousness, let's just say we come out of this week 0 for 2. Oof. Right, so we're sitting back here. So we're sitting back here Monday. I mean, does the Berliner close just due to lack of, like, (laughs) soccer, good teams? Uh, No, really, like, where, where are we at next week? If Sounders lose to forget the Wednesday for a second, because I think that is in the same vein you're talking about, like people are like, uh, sure, but like you lose to DC. <laughs> is that even a league? 
Um, not currently. <laughs> so we come back next week, like, really, like, where are we at? Because we're already at the... We're arguing over when we should fire Garth. Sooner or later. Like, that's a discussion. We just talked about celery for, like, ten minutes. <laughs> right, like... <laughs> but really, where, where do we go from there? Forget the celery for a second, because we'll have moved on to less effective vegetables. Like beets. Not a good peanut butter delivery method. <laughs> That's actually how we should rate vegetables from now are we gonna, on. Iceberg just, lettuce? Yes. So are we gonna have Romaine? A, no. Are we going to have a veggie bracket next? <laughs> and we actually probably should. Uh, you should definitely bring it. Bring it. All right, no, but seriously, like, where, where, do you, where do you think... Let's talk about the players for a second. If we're on next Monday, the players are a day relieved or two days after a loss. Where are they at? I don't know that it would make that much of a difference so the right same. now. It's just like, I mean, they're close to scraping rock bottom as it is. It's just tougher to get more demoralizing than the way. Isn't that, that worse, played. though? Like, if there's nowhere else to go? Yeah, kind of. But they would just sort of be spinning their wheels, right? I don't think that there's any drastic change. Because I just don't know. That, I mean, what do you do? There's, yeah, there's, they can't make any personnel changes on and the, if, on like, the, on comes the field. Back and they make a signing in the summer and then they keep losing, then it does change the dynamic. But right now, what are you going to say? Do you think that Ladero or Victor Rodriguez win the battle of close cropped haircut for the season? <laughs> Which one of those two players wins that battle? I think Victor pulls it off better. He yeah. does look significantly yeah. better. Yeah. I did enjoy, though, the other day, Eileen, who's in the chat, pointed out something and then mickey had you pointed out the haircut yeah, yeah yeah and there was some back and forth and then it was like it better not be a rolled on was the first response oh. to someone having a new haircut <laughs> which is great that we've devolved like, yeah. the celery discussions yes. Yes. into i hope one of the rolled ons didn't cut their hair too short <laughs> how about if one of the rolled ons just scored a goal I mean, or weird. both of them did they have a younger sibling that we can also <laughs> sign? <laughs> they do have an older. Nice. I think okay. he uh, works for L.A. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Adam's sending me Slack messages in the middle of the show, which means I should be concerned for our health. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> Anyway, so it so it doesn't get any worse. Is, you, is your gut? No. Do you think anybody uh, on the team right now, forget Ladero for a second, moves in the window elsewhere? Probably there are the to a fishing cabin. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Do you think that there's any chance ever that Clint Dempsey rage quits? No. Totally serious. Does a Griffey and just I think packs up his car and drives away. Before. I think that like the yeah. fire has sort of gone out altogether, right. which is even more. But that's where it's like, I mean, players do that. Yeah. Roger did that. Like other players, they're just like, I'm retiring. Peace. And he's also yeah. on the hook for like $1.3 um, million. A couple bucks. I yeah. think, no. I think he'll well, hold off until the no. end of the year. It's a hard no. Okay. All right. That's good. JJ agrees. Not for what he's getting paid. Yeah. I could agree with that. So... Uh, do you think the play in the next three weeks changes uh, any move that we would make in the window? No. I think so no matter what, the eight-figure move is hap happening. Oh, so basically if they keep just yeah, falling like, off altogether. Let's just, just say right to... now they've got Suarez on the hook. If the team is garbage through July 4th, do they make that move? Yes. Because of the appetite of the fan base and because an MLS that never makes any sense to tank. No, it's just... Yeah. yeah. This, is so not, are like your first this is not your first round. This is not the NFL. number one pick in right. MLS yeah. draft is... So is, you, you, there is no benefit to holding off. And I think that, especially like with the GM election coming up, for example, like you have to put out as good a product as for possible. Sure. And frankly, August and September in Seattle is pretty epic, so irrelevant of where you're from. 
you should yeah. want to come here. Yeah, it's going to be all right. I mean, unless you're from Portland, then you can mm-hmm. yeah. stay Probably in Portland. Portland. Yeah. Mickey Turner. Yes. We should sadly give a moment to discuss what's happening in oh, the fuck, lovely fuck. <laughs> state of Ohio. Oh, yes. Ohio. Uh, yeah, so there's been some That's updates. Matt Pence's favorite state, by the way. <laughs> yes. Where I went to school? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, there's been a couple of updates on the old Save the Crew uh, situation. Uh, the city, well, first of all, uh, I'm sure pretty much everyone knows that Austin came out with their uh, their report on the site that uh, Precord and MLS are trying to move to, which basically said it's a suitable site to build a stadium at, which you know, doesn't really tell you anything. Um, and then Precord came out with a uh, recommendation for what he would like to see in the form of a stadium agreement. And there were some, you know, it was basically give us a land for free. We'll build the stadium on our own dime. We'll then lease the stadium back to you so we don't have to pay property taxes. Um, and then we'll lease the stadium for a dollar a year for the next 20 years. Uh, and then the sta- uh, Austin can have X number of events that they can rent out the stadium for at you know, basically no cost. And so that's kind of their opening bid. I don't think this Austin would agree to accept that. And there's another. There's a few other things that are complicating it because there's not really any parking there, number one. Number two, there is a light rail, quote unquote, which is basically like one train on one track. It is literally yes. one train. Yeah, I've taken it. Yeah. It's uh, it, it's, it's technically yeah. transit. Yeah, it's not, it's not. It's nominally a transit system out there. So they want that to be improved so that uh, they can move more people, you know, back and forth. So we'll see if that happens. Uh, it doesn't really have anything to do with the lawsuit um, in Columbus. Um, at all. So I know, you know, it sucks for crew fans who see all this, you know, negotiating back and forth going on, but it doesn't affect the lawsuit at all. Um, as far as the lawsuit is concerned, we've got, uh, an appeal of that order that was entered, which really helped the crew, uh, save the crew, uh, cause because it ordered MLS to hand over some financial information. Uh, it, uh, ordered them to come up with a non-disclosure agreement, ordered them to come and and sit with the court and figure out what a bona fide purchaser, a local purchaser is for the stadium. So all of that stuff, MLS obviously did not like at all. So they immediately went and appealed. Uh, and uh, the city of Columbus then filed their opposition to MLS recent uh, Friday, uh, sent out their response to that appeal uh, or the motion to dismiss. Uh, I reviewed it. I did not find it particularly well written or persuasive. Uh, so we'll see if it if they win on it. I, based on what I've read, I do not think MLS and pre court are going to win. Which means that if that happens, the lower court order stays in place. They have to turn over the financials. Uh, they have to sit down and you know discuss what they're going to do with regard to the uh, you know bona fide purchaser coming in. A local buyer, basically, from Columbus to, to purchase, uh, purchase the team um, and some other things. And if they lose the appeal, they are going to go nuts, I think, MLS is, because they, they obviously do not want to be in Columbus at this point. I mean, that's just clear to see. Um, and if, if they are required to sit down and hand over financials, they are probably going to pull whatever they can to try to get to not make that happen, right. which means they may try to appeal to the Ohio Supreme Court. They may try to move it to federal court. They, I'm not sure what their other options are really. If if that appeal or if if that order stays in place and they have to submit all that stuff, um, the other thing is that obviously they have to come. They can't even move the team without a stadium deal because that's in that Austin clause that we've talked about right. where basically pre court has the ability to move the team right. expansion team without the expansion. Team. Yeah, yeah, and. MLS, in theory, can't stop it. Again, no one's seen this agreement. I'm still skeptical it exists, but yeah. Does it uh, matter, though? They'll, I mean, just, they'll yeah. just move. Yeah, and so I think what, you know, I don't know what MLS is going to, how, what lengths they're going to go to try to, to thwart this thing. You know, they could just say, we're moving, and dare them to get a, try to get an injunction. 
they're not going to move before the season's up because they don't have a place to play in Austin. Um, and who knows if that would be, you know, who knows if they could do that anyway. So if they try to move before the season's up, that is kind of like a, you know, damn the common sense torpedoes yeah. full speed ahead. Yeah. Um, but they're talking about playing it. At UT. Yeah, yeah. And they don't have a, an agreement with them to do that right. either. I mean, I, you know, they could do... By the way, that could, would be the best post-game hangout of dude. all time. I've actually never been to Austin, uh, but I've heard it's, it's, yeah. it's a fun like town. They, yeah. it, would, it would be like, imagine if, uh, I don't know, Pike Place Market to the stadium was bars <laughs> and then you block the streets for cars yeah. after 6 p.m. So you just walk in everywhere. And bars and pizza, bars and pizza. There's a pizza place that has multiple locations on the same street. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Starbucks basically. Is what you're yeah, saying. basically, except like saying. for drinking. Yeah. yeah, that sounds pretty fun. Um, but I, I mean, I just don't know what they're willing to do to make this move happen. If they come to an agreement with Austin, and announce the move, then the city's going to go try to get an injunction to prevent them from moving. Right. Um, if they do that and, you know, the court grants the injunction, then in theory they can't move. But maybe MLS decides that they don't want to, you know, they'll abide by the injunction, but they may try to move it to federal court, like I said. You know, in an extreme example, who knows if they would try to contract the, tr the crew. I don't think they would do that. But in theory, they could basically... Pay, you know, like they did with Chivas, basically pay off Remove pre court, shut down the team, and then open something somewhere, you know, in Austin. I mean, again, that's an extreme, extreme I, remedy, and I don't know if they would want to risk the PR. This feels done to me. Yeah. Like, it feels done, and I know that as somebody who's spent a minute in Ohio, I know that Cincinnati and Columbus are not the same thing. No, I genuinely no. feel like the MLS Cincinnati thing are. is like, we'll give Ohio a team. Yeah. I think Meanwhile, Columbusites are like, fuck your city, dude. <laughs> like, they're not going to care. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, awesome. I can't believe that MLS would think that that would fly. I, um, but MLS but, thinks a lot of things fly. Yeah. So I don't think that they care. I don't yeah, think they care that's about the, I think the bigger right. part. They, the yeah, they've had it. They've had. I don't know if but they've like had it in team, for Columbus. You took team number one. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Like that's what you're yeah. doing right now. I don't know. It I just, don't know if they have it in for Columbus, but they certainly have had issues with the lack of quote unquote corporate support there for. I, I, if if I remember, feel, like ten or fifteen years. It does feel recently like it's been tampered with or manipulated to mm -hmm. like. You know, tamp it down. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, in Columbus. A, a total major league uh, situation. Yeah, it does feel yeah. like that. Uh, although I saw Columbus and Chicago. Chicago's linked with literally every player in Europe of all time <laughs> yeah. right now. Like any decent player. Chicago interested. But Columbus came up again is like potentially interested yeah. in. Well, their team's never. It hasn't signing. been terrible. No, uh, but actually they've, been, they've been good for the last. Uh, since 2008, they've had, you know, a couple of bad seasons. But by and large, they've been in the playoffs, I think. I think I looked, and they've been in the playoffs, like, every year except for one or two. Um, I they still had, really wish that they had hosted MLS Cup last year. Yeah, that would have been pretty. so close. Oh, yes. my gosh. And that would have been so yes. amazing, yeah. optically. Like, the league mm -hmm. would have just been like, uh, <laughs> uh, we don't care. But this is bad. Yeah, because uh, that was, like, two months after the, uh, the announcement was yeah. made. So, uh yeah, I do not know what MLS is going to do if they lose that appeal and reach an agreement with Austin. Did you guys because... see this? Oh, God. <laughs> so, Adam, do you know the detail on this? Is that, uh, is JJ, that... JJ found those for us. Those so are... I don't know if these are like <laughs> Austin Football Club. Any sort of real <laughs> from a... The website uh, that he found them on is boards.sportslogos.net. The problem Sounds with this stuff is, is that, like, there's genuinely a little bit of truth when you stumble upon these things. Mm -hmm. And if you do five minutes of digging on the shady shit that, like, the supporter group in Austin, uh, like, yes. you know, MLS to Austin, yeah. like mm -hmm. that stuff, you're like, oh, you are literally owned 
by the company. Anthony Precor. Like, yeah, yeah. It's definitely an astro. So nothing, thing. nothing really surprises me anymore. I. Yeah. The next thing, uh, just briefly, is uh, the response to the uh, appeal is due on Friday, I think, give or take. Um, and so that'll set up the appeal, then the court will make a, a decision. There won't be any oral argument, as far as I know. So they could come up with a decision, say, next week, maybe. Um, and then, again, if MLS loses the appeal, they're going to go nuts. Because, uh, you know, they, at that point, they are, they are required to sit down and t- start turning over financial information right. uh, regarding... Yes. Well, probably not any some documents at this point. And that stuff will be under seal anyway, so I won't get to look at it, unfortunately, unless I uh, get some uh, somebody to leak it. Uh, hint, hint. Uh, <laughs> Call somebody at <laughs> yes. the White House. Yes, uh, yes. It'll be under, yeah, it, I, we won't get to look at it, unfortunately. But, again, I still don't think MLS is going to allow that to happen, or if they, if they can help it, of course. Well, I mean, they can always just nuclear option their way out of that and... Go the other I still think right. that's like a five percent chance, but if they lose appeal, right. maybe it goes up to twenty five. Right. And if they reach a deal with Austin, maybe it's fifty 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 at that point. Yeah, I just I, I've never been this person in until maybe two three years ago where I really fell onto that maybe just hold off on the expansion thing for a hot second, like. You're approving 20,000 seat stadiums mm-hmm. repeatedly. Yeah. Like nothing seems to be consistent. You're letting New York City play in Yankee Stadium again. For probably the next five years. Right. At and least like, five let's to just ten be clear. years. When the Jets were going to build the West Side Rail Yard Stadium, it was like a five-year turn. And that's the Jets. And the NFL was like, yes, we will host a New York Super Bowl in two seconds. And it was going to take them five years to do that. Like, there's no land. Like, it doesn't work the same way as other places. And I know Yankee Stadium got quick turned, relatively speaking. But they built it on a park with a couple of homes, like, as, as like, residences stand. Uh, I don't know. It feels like we're chasing that. We're chase. We're not NA- old NASL level crazy, but we're chasing that expansion fee right now a little bit too much for our comfort. Well, and I think that has mostly probably to do with the uh, the TV deal that's coming up. Uh, I think it's twenty twenty two, so it's yeah. you know still a little ways away. But you know they rushed New York City in there because they knew that they wanted another New York market in right. there uh, for the TV deal. So they're trying to get Miami in, which. Who the hell knows if that is ever going to happen? There's actually there's an appeal I think going down tomorrow um, on that site that they're trying to build at that they don't even want to play at anymore. Right. Uh, so it's just a lot of this expansion stuff is just it, it hasn't turned out the way they thought it was going to turn no, out. No, they they, they yeah. crowed so much about oh we have 10, twelve yeah 10, twelve teams yeah ten cities that but are like, desperately fighting road, for MLS. There's like a road trip <laughs> of six cities, and I'm like, do you guys know what that? constructed 3D table model of a stadium costs like tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars to do the design and then 3D print it or physically build it or whatever just the model let alone the paperwork and the rest of it and I think the league is like yeah just keep them coming yeah and that's like that kind of sucks it does, and it just it felt like they got out ahead of it, and then it yeah. was like, if you're getting down to the point where you're having to choose between, like, Cincinnati, which has had a lot of issues, Sacramento, yeah. no disrespect to Sacramento, no, but and they a bad them. Detroit bit, bad, like, yeah. you don't mm-hmm. need to be expanding right. yeah. anymore then. Mm-hmm. Like, it, they just got way out ahead of the demand. Yeah. It, it just is like, uh, hell, hypocrisy aside for a second, like, yeah. the bullshit of what the word united means and the way this fucking league uses it right now. It's like, it was that for a reason. And now they're like, nope, it's a cool name. We'll just let people keep it. But not that team. You know, the pick and choose-ness, uh, it just feels like way too easy right now. Like if we were struggling over these decisions, you know, or like there was such demand. Like, do you remember there was a point where it was like 30,000 people are in Sacramento and we're like, holy shit. Like, where did that come from? Yeah. And now Sacramento is like, what, sixth in the run right now, in the list right now? That's crazy. Yeah. You know, and... It it, it fell apart 
pretty quickly. Like once St. Louis couldn't pass the vote yeah. uh, to get the stadium built, uh, that really set them on a path where you know all the teams started just falling by the wayside. Charlotte, uh, Raleigh, uh, you know Phoenix is I guess kind of moving in the right direction. But then Detroit came in and did the bait and switch. They were going to build on a prison yard right in the middle of downtown. Then they decided they were once the guy got the land. It was like, I don't really need to build a new stadium here. Why don't we just play at four field? Um, but, dude, DCFC supporters are going to burn their fucking stadium down. <laughs> yeah. Like, they, uh, why would you do that? Well, they're not getting in at this point anyways. No, but it's but, just, yeah. it's like every other one, they seem like they're going down the right path. You're like, oh, okay, you want to embrace the supporters. You want to go with the team that exists. Like, Minnesota... I don't love all of how that went down, but at least you were like, oh, okay, we recognize this is a thing. Let's work with it. Let's move them up. Mm -hmm. That's where Indy 11 was for a second. You're yeah. like, oh, shit, that's going to happen. Like, you have a cool park to play in. They had sold, like, 15,000 season tickets. I'm like, holy shit, where'd you come from, you know? And the, the struggle I have is we're going to S2 or you go down to T2 or you look at some of these other teams – and they're selling 2,000 tickets, and we're happy about oh, it. If that. And these cities are selling 30, 20, 10 is a big number. Yeah. You have 21,000 people on a Saturday night in your city? Like, hell yeah. And you're not MLS or, you know, any other kind of sport? Like, that's a really big deal. And we're ignoring that? Yeah. It just feels so short-sighted, and it's... It is unfortunately about the money, and every sport's going to be about the money forever, and we're never going to win this argument, but it feels like it became the dog and pony show for the sake of saying, we've got six to ten teams in yeah. the hopper now, not these are all legitimate options. Yeah. You know, like, I will say Nashville, that's a pretty good opportunity. They're actually lucky that that came through. Yeah. As well as because if that had not come through... They would have had nothing to announce in December right. after having, you know, really yeah, yeah, they, you know, they, yeah. They were going to have two teams in December, and if Nashville hadn't come through, they would have had zero. Right. Mm. Nashville's going to be fun. The Cincinnati mm. thing. I actually feel like I, I uh, feel worse about this topic because of the way that Cincinnati's getting jammed in here. Yeah. It feels like it's preordained on the Columbus thing. It feels like mm. a they don't give a shit, but. This is fine bullshit. Like, I'm unaware of society. Um, and, like, good for Cincinnati. Like, mm -hmm. if you can figure this out and rock it and, well, they're not doing anything like the size of the crowds they were pulling in last year um, for that. But it just feels shitty. And, like, this is the stuff where all the people who've hated on MLS for the last, you know, 15 years have been like, your league sucks and here's why. Forget the pro rel discussion, yeah. but like the money part. Yeah, this is where unfortunately they we just were got right. twenty tweets about pro well. <laughs> just now, <laughs> just now, because yeah. you said it. Um, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm entirely with you on that. It, they have made it very hard to be anything close to like a true believer in their whole mission that they're trying to espouse, and the way that they've gone down through all of this. It's just, it's just frustrating, and it's um, again, as someone who supports an expansion team that was born out of a team that had some legitimacy. There are literally dozens of those teams in this country that are getting burned left and yeah. right. And it just seems so dumb. Yeah. You know, and that's where you realize like genuinely, and I sit on these calls with the league and security and Mickey's been on these calls too. A couple of other people have been, at least one of you have like the, it's not like, don't respect me because people have been around a minute, mm -hmm. but like there's just such there's actually the like, disdain for people who've like seen some shit. Yeah. And that's the part where you're like, oh, okay, I can be jaded too. You know, and that's where it's going. And on one hand, I love that there's enough money and support and support, uh, but you know, fanship, whatever you want to call it, for soccer in the country. Uh, but on the other hand, like, doesn't have to go that way yeah you know for sure and the way that they've handled the u.s world cup thing too they're like oh no what but there's still money so it doesn't matter that we missed the world cup we're right. still mm. getting investments i'm like that's Yay. a huge deal for love, building the sport in the country I love those shorts. <laughs> you those shorts. wow Again. did you buy the uh the fanny pack the other day 
the only product that's left from was it Nigeria? Uh, yeah. Okay. Is that all that's left? Really? Yeah. It, it was basically the fanny pack. Yeah. And the best is there's like fashion people on Twitter who are like, I'm super fashionable. I'm not cool enough to wear this fanny pack. And I'm like, yes! <laughs> Someone We've has done it! Done it. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was pretty good. Uh, so stay tuned for the next two months where we discuss World Cup kits. Oh, God. <laughs> Drama with Bethlehem Steel. <laughs> <laughs> Which team is worse than the Union? You know what? Fuckwit owns that. The rights to that. Bethlehem Steel? Yeah. Probably Alan Hinton. And <laughs> no comment. Everybody's favorite Twitter troll. <laughs> he does, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, I gotta go. Uh, the, the yeah, I did as well. Yeah. All right, so it's time for uh, karaoke. Uh, yes. Ma- Mr. Matthew Pence, thank you for joining us. Thank you for yet having again. Me. Always, thank thanks, you. guys. I really appreciate you guys having me on. Adam, thanks for keeping us on the internet. <laughs> I mean, I guess ish. <laughs> Mickey, thanks for sticking around. I know oh, we we are putting you through the paces. Yes. Uh, thanks to the Berliner for hosting us. Thanks for the crew here in the bar for not being too drunk and putting your arm on the screen. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next Monday. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hmm. Sounds like a jolly little picnic group.